Grab your phone and Google any kind of product you would like to buy. This is what every e-commerce is doing with the products. All your competitors are doing it. But what they don't know is that this is what ranks better in Google. Sadly, creating just a page that lists all the products you have in your stock and just a little bit of text in the bottom doesn't work anymore. Sadly, because it's easy to do. <laughs> Instead, you need to help your users through their buying decision. Or what the whole internet calls provide more value. Okay, but what does this mean? E-commerce websites have different type of pages. These are the home page. We all know what that is. Then we have category pages. This is where we list all the products of a specific type. For example, bioethanol fireplaces. Then we have product pages, which is the page where we actually show the product, the photos, the text, and where you can actually buy it. And finally, we have blog posts where we can make guides that rank in Google and bring clients. But remember this, the one that is going to bring you the most clients are the category pages. To start with, you need to find the most popular way that people search for your category page. One easy way to find this out is you simply ask yourself, what do I sell? For example, my client sells fireplaces, which are bioethanol fireplaces and electric ones. So straight away, we have two different categories there that we've identified with a simple question. But for this video, let's focus on the bioethanol fireplaces. We want to find the different ways that people search for this actual product. But how do we do this? Keyword research. I'm sure you heard this word before. There are two techniques that us SEO professionals use to gather keywords, which are the competitor keyword technique and the one I called the king keyword technique. The competitor technique is actually very simple. You just need to steal what other competitors are doing. I love this one. So first, search your main keyword in Google and see what pages show up. You might see some familiar names because you know your competitors. And if not, congratulations, because you just found new competitors. Now I want you to find the ones that are quite similar to you, what we call direct competitors. So avoid websites like Amazon, Walmart, or just big e-commerce. Then I simply want you to get the URL and put it through this tool. And what it's going to do is just extract all the keywords that not just only this page, but the whole competitor ranks for. Then simply export. I don't want you to look at anything or make any decision here. If you want to do this action for free, you can use this other tool, which has 10 searches or so a month. Once you've done this for all the competitors, obviously the more you do, the better. I want you to copy paste all that information into this Google sheet. This is the actual one that I use for my clients. And I, being a nice guy, gonna give it to you for free. So just click in this link in the description and you will get the Google Sheets for free. As you can see straight away, we've already identified Damn, quite a son. few keywords with just this simple technique. And the king keyword technique is even more simple. Just search your king keyword, bioethanol fireplaces, in this tool and it's going to give you related keywords to that one. And again, just export as many as possible and put them in your Google Sheets. The free tool I've given you also has this capability. So hey, you can also do this for free. Once you copy pasted all the keywords in the sheets, you will see a few things. First, that I've applied conditional formatting. So the high numbers are green and the small are red. This is great because the higher the search volume, so the amount of times that a keyword is searched every month, the better for you. And green is good and red is bad, I guess. And you might see that some keywords are pink this means that they are duplicates. The reason I've added this is because I don't want them to be deleted. Why? Because if a keyword is pink, it means that many of your competitors that you've pasted are ranking for it, which will obviously mean that it's quite an important keyword that you should be targeting to. And the last step in the keyword research is to identify what keywords do we have. You could go one by one, which would be quite crazy, or you can use this tool. Simply filter all the keywords by a word that defines your main category. In my example, ethanol. This is to avoid any keywords that might have come that are not relevant, like electrical fireplaces. Just copy all those keywords and paste them in the tool. Give it a few minutes and it's going to group them together by words. It uses quite advanced technology, so it's gonna save you hundreds of hours. And what you're gonna get is some nice groups where you can identify patterns. One trick I recommend you to do is to exclude the main words. This way the tool will not make a group with that word. And as you can see, from those hundreds of keywords, we can see many different types, like indoor, like outdoor, or even color. And with this, you've identified all the things that your potential clients search for and cluster them in a logical sense so you can rank in Google. When you search something in Google, it's because you have a need. You want something, right? Well, Google is actually trying to identify this even before you search. Why? Because imagine for a whole month, every time you search in Google, you didn't get the results you wanted. You had to go back, research, and you didn't get it. In the end, you will just use another service, like Bing, Bruh. I guess. Well, they don't want that. And they actually spend millions and millions of dollars to make sure that their results that rank are the thing you want to see. So us, 
As smart SEOs, we can understand this logic and implement it into our SEO strategy. For example, you might be wondering if you should make a page targeting indoor bioethanol fireplaces and freestanding ones, or you should create two different pages. Well, guess what? You can just go and search in Google. If when you search both keywords, Google shows similar results, it means that if you create one page, it can rank for both keywords. And if it shows two different sets of results, it means you should create two pages, each targeting each keyword. The reason you want to do this is because you want to have your main category, bioethanol fireplaces, and under it, subcategories, like different types, indoor, outdoor, freestanding, colors, sizes, and even styles, like modern. How can you do this? Well, I actually have another tool that I use in my day to day for you. So go to the link and you will get the Google Sheets, but it's as simple as that. Simply search the keyword, and download SEO Minion extension. Then, what it's gonna let you do is to copy all the results into the sheets. So I've done that with the main bioethanol fireplaces keyword and the indoor one. And if any result was duplicate, it will show up in red. So if there are not many reds, it means the results are different and you should create two pages. And with another example, if most of the results are red, it means that Google is just showing similar pages. If you don't want to do this by hand, one by one, you can do it in bulk with Keyword Insights tool. The tool isn't free, but it saves you hundreds of hours because you just get the whole bulk of keywords, give it to them, and they will cluster them. And you will get a list right there for you in one second. So now you've identified what pages you have to create. With my example, I will create a main bioethanol fireplace page and then different types like indoor, outdoor, freestanding, and a few more. Alex, at the beginning of the video, you said I shouldn't add a list of all the products with a bit of text. So what do I need to add? And my answer is, use your head. <laughs> For a moment, try to imagine you're a potential client and you're searching this product. And write down what things would you like to see. Obviously, the main one would be, I want to see the products, but what extra things? We're trying to make their process of buying easier. It's like trying to go into a shop. And if you don't get any help, it's just like, okay, I guess I do the work to find. But it's always great to get a bit of help, like, oh, this is the newest product, this is the cheapest. Although some people don't like to get help in shops, I think it's pretty good. But if I was you, I would do what I do with my clients. So add these things. Add an impressive initial section. This is important because 100% of the people who come here will see it. It's what we call above the fold. So I like to add promotional videos, nice photos, but always, always add a title that explains what the page is and an inciting short sentence. Sometimes I might stay one hour just to think of this sentence. This is how important it is. And finally, add a call to action button. Then you can add some introduction text that explains a product and you can even show which one you think is the best. People want to know this. You should also add your category. So the different types of bioethanol fireplaces that you have, or my client. <laughs> this will help your client refine their search. So they might not want to see all the products and refine themselves one by one. They might be looking just for outdoor ones. And now you just made it easier for them. Then of course, add all your products. That should always be there. And finally, add questions and useful answers that anyone who's looking for your product could be asking themselves. Having said all this, you need to be very smart about one thing. How do you place all this information I've just said that you need to add in the correct order? Should I add all the products first and then everything at the bottom or the best product up there? What should you do? My answer is use your head. <laughs> Always use your head. Always think. Let me give you two examples. With the client I'm speaking about, I've identified a few things. People are going to spend a lot of money in this product, so they want to make sure that they made the right decision. Because of this, they want a lot of opinion. So the client can know that we're not just the e-commerce, here are all the products, do your thing. We actually have criteria and we're looking to help them. With this client, for example, it's not like that. They rent cars, which is not an e-commerce, but it's quite similar at the end of the day. And I've identified that people want to rent a car fast and get the cheapest one and see the price really quickly. So I've added all the cars we have straight away. And then in the bottom, I've added more of the information we talk in the video. As you can see, the order is different. So make sure you're thoughtful about this. This is what you do. It's called SEO on page. I'm sure you heard that before also, especially if you join my newsletter, which actually, if you haven't, you should. I send one newsletter every week with seven mini SEO lessons. They're under a minute, so it won't take you a lot of time and you will actually learn. Why? Because I only show the things that I do with my clients that have gotten results, actual Google rankings. So go to this link, subscribe, and I hope these mini lessons can help you. And if they don't and you still don't rank, just contact me and I will do SEO for you. <laughs> okay, let's stay on track, SEO on page. I also have a checklist for you. <laughs> if you go to the link that I told you for the other two tools, put your email and I will send it straight away for you. A Google Docs where you can have a checklist that anytime you make a page, follow it and maybe you rank. 
Use age tags in the titles correctly. What is this? Websites are made with HTML and the titles on your page are structured by age. H1 being the main title, H2, the subtitle of H1 and so on. It goes up to six or seven, I think. So all this information structure it correctly. This way people can see the titles, but most importantly, when Google comes and crawls your page, they will understand the structure better. And if they understand it better, they trust you and they rank you better. Also, if you're smart, which you are, <laughs> add keywords, the important ones in these titles. Add nice images, show the product. Especially in e-commerce, it's really important to have them because they're going to help convince the client to buy from you. But from the SEO standpoint, make sure they're optimized. So they're not huge. Normally they should be under 100 kilobytes. And then in the file name, as well as the alt text, add keywords. So Google can rank them better. Specifically in the alt text, make sure you describe the image correctly. Add inciting selling text. Use some copywriting techniques. As well as images, what you write and what people read is crucial to influence people to take action. Make sure the paragraphs are not too long, that you separate stuff, that you use bullet points. Talk a bit of character, as if you, the business owner, were talking with the client. Give your opinion, this is what they want to see. Why is this important? Because obviously more people will buy, but also they will stay longer in the page. And Google sees this. If they search for the keyword, then you rank, thanks to watching this video, and people click on your result and actually stay longer on the page, it gives signals to them that that's the right result. So it's all good stuff. Add schema markup. Schema markup is a type of language, just like HTML, that helps you mark stuff in the website so search engines can understand it better. You add this in the back end of your site. This is important because again, if Google understands, they rank, logic, but also you can be eligible for rich results. For example, in category pages, I recommend you that in the FAQ questions you add in the bottom, you mark them with this schema markup. Why? Well, because if Google sees this and they decide to because sometimes they just do what they want, you might show up with this big box. This is great because you get more space and you catch more the attention and then get more clicks. Optimize your SEO titles and descriptions. Add keywords, add, th add things that will make people click. One way to do this is again, search your target keyword, see what titles your competitors are doing and write something that catches the attention. Make sure it's not too long so it's not cut. And did I say that already? Mm, add your keyword, always add your keyword. <laughs> Remember the FAQ questions I said that you should add in your page around one or two minutes ago? Well, you need to find these questions, right? Go to this tool and type your main keyword and you will get all the questions that Google is showing in the also ask box. So add them in your page and answer them. This literally can take you 15 minutes to do, it's very simple. Simple stuff. And finally, add internal links. This is crucial. Make sure that when you create your important category page that you want to rank that is linked internally from other pages of your web. Website. For example, you can add it in the menu so all the pages have a link to this page or also in the home page. One little trick you can do is to make sure that the text of the link that is called anchor text has the keyword that you target. So, bioethanol fireplaces. If a page in your website has a lot of internal links, you're basically telling Google that this page is important. You're like doing like this, hey, this one, this one. And remember, many more of these things are in my checklist. So download it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If the video was worth it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all these things. So drop a comment there. I put seven quick one minute lessons every week on YouTube and social media and more full SEO tutorials like these ones are coming to my YouTube. Let's go.